This is Kevin Patton with another study tip for human anatomy and physiology. This time we're talking about concept lists, which is a powerful learning strategy that helps us get from the bottom of the learning pyramid to the top. Uh, you probably already know that uh, learning just the facts isn't enough. We have to climb the pyramid and uh, understand how those facts relate to one another and be able to apply them, analyze, evaluate, create using those facts. Uh, you know, remembering the facts, that's challenging enough, but I think most of us understand a few basic ways to do that. Uh, the trick is, well, how do you get to the top? Uh, you know, what are some of the strategies we can use? Uh, well, that's not an easy thing to summarize, um, and there are many different strategies to get up there, but one that you might think about using is uh, using what's called a running concept list. Uh, the running concept list is simply a list of terms or concepts that are related to one another. So, you know, looking at this example, uh, collagen is a protein, and uh, as you study human anatomy physiology, you figure out that, you know, it's a structural protein, it's a fibrous protein, it's white, but it often stains pink, it's strong and flexible, and then a little bit later on, you learn about uh, the different connective tissues that collagen is found in, and you would list out the different tissue types you'd find it in, and then a little later, you learn about it, uh, its role in the skin and uh, forming skin ligaments and the dermis of the skin and then as you proceed through your A&P course you'll learn about collagen's role in the bone and the various parts of the bone organ you might find it in or other parts of the skeleton and as time goes on you'll just keep running into collagen. So the idea here is that you want to uh, run this list. You want to keep adding to the list as you encounter related ideas. So early in the course you would start your collagen list, but you'd only add a few items. And then as time goes by, you would add, uh, you run into collagen again, you would add more information that you're learning about collagen. And then collagen comes up again and again. So let's run a list for sodium here. Uh, we're going to learn all kinds of things early in the course about how it's an, a positive ion and uh, that it's part of table salt and so on. And then you, you uh, learn that, well, cells seem to not like sodium because they're always pumping sodium out of the cell. And then we learn about gated sodium channels that are involved in um, uh, local potentials and voltage gated channels that are involved in action potentials and uh, boy we start just running into sodium all over the place we don't have room on this page to put all the stuff that we would learn about sodium so we can run that list through two semesters of anatomy and physiology and still not finish with what we need to know about sodium it's something you can bring on into other professional courses and clinical experiences and even into your career um, and so you basically are building your own version of an encyclopedia and adding to uh, adding layers um, to what you already know about the basic concepts. So some of the benefits of running a concept list would uh, include uh, helping you see how different things are related uh, by putting them together and in building uh, over time uh, increased uh, information and understanding of relationships. Uh, another benefit of running a concept list is that uh, it helps you organize your learning. You, you um, start pulling things out that um, are arranged in a way that's a little bit different than you would find in your textbook or in your class notes or concept maps or whatever else you're using to uh, study the topic. Um, and as I said a moment ago, uh, what you're doing is you're you're really building your own personal encyclopedia of what you're learning, something that you can not only study for um, your immediate learning goals, but uh, something that you can uh, use uh, for the next years and decades as you uh, continue to apply the basic information you're learning in your A&P course. So just a few examples of some things you might want to get started with. Uh, even if you don't know anything about any of these items, uh, uh, start a list for each one of these and as you encounter them say, oh yeah, I have a sodium list and so you're going to add to that. Or, oh yeah, I have a cytoskeleton list and here's the cytoskeleton doing something else. Here's it doing something else. Uh, 
a cytoskeleton, which is the skeleton inside the cell, a lot of students think, well, that's just at the beginning of the course when we learn about cells and cell parts, and that's the end of what I need to know about the cytoskeleton. But when you get to the uh, muscles and muscle contraction, you understand that the cytoskeleton of a muscle fiber is very unique, and it's made up of thick and thin filaments that um, uh, interact in a certain way that uh, produce the contraction of a muscle fiber. So that's additional information about the cytoskeleton. And you'll start to see other roles that the cytoskeleton plays throughout the body. And if you have a cytoskeleton list already started, you can start to get an appreciation for this overall the design element in the body, this overall uh, anatomical concept that just keeps coming up in the physiology again and again and again. So you know, just a few examples to get you started. You're going to end up, as I said, with a whole encyclopedia of these things. So there's no one comprehensive list here. If you want to know more about using concept lists, then go to the URL in the little box at the top of your screen. And for general study tips in studying human anatomy and physiology, visit me at theapstudent.org.